question that Jesus teaching that he is the bread of life. To worship God and receive the good news of Jesus Christ. the emergency broadcast system. We hear those words with annoyance if they happen to interrupt our favorite show, Jeopardy. But other people buy weather scanners just in case the emergency systems fail. There is relief, however, when we hear the words, this is a test. There is no imminent danger, and we won't miss much of the show we were watching. If it were a true emergency, we'd be heading for our places of safety. Jesus tested Philip by asking him how they were to feed the crowd that had followed them into the wilderness. He replied, it would be too expensive to feed the crowd. Another disciple spotted a boy with a lunch basket with five loaves and two fishes but knew that would be useless in feeding a crowd of thousands. To the disciples' amazement, when they followed Jesus' order, there was enough, more than enough, way more than enough. Where the disciples saw problems, Jesus gave blessings. But the story isn't finished. Did the disciples pass the test? If Jesus asked us how to feed a crowd, Will we pass the test? Will we see problems? Or will we recognize blessings? Follow us into the hymn of 339, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. Join me in the unison prayer. Lord, isn't your creation wasteful? Fruits never equal. 
the seedlings abundance. Springs scatter water. The sun gives out enormous light. May your bounty teach me greatness of heart. May your magnificence stop me being mean. Seeing you a prodigal and open-handed giver, let me give unstintingly like a king's son, like God's own. Bible. Um, Kathy, am I using a mic? That This one, okay. Just checking. After this, Jesus went across the Galilee Sea. Um, that is the Tiberias Sea. A large crowd followed him because they had seen the miraculous signs he had done among the sick. Jesus went up a mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now it was nearly time for the Passover, the Jewish festival. Jesus looked up and saw the large crowd coming toward him. And he asked Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Now Jesus said this to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, more than half a year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, a youth hare has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that for a crowd like this? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of green grass there. So they sat down, about 5,000 of them. And then Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to those who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, each getting as much as they wanted. And when they'd had plenty to eat, he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that had been left over by those who had eaten. Now when the people saw that he had done a miraculous sign, they said, oh, this is truly the prophet who is coming into the world. But Jesus understood that they were about to come and force him to be their king. So he took refuge again, alone, on a mountain. When evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake. They got into a boat and were crossing the sea, the lake, to Capernaum. Now it was already getting dark and Jesus hadn't come to them yet. The water was getting rough because a strong wind was blowing. When the wind had driven them out for about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He was approaching the boat, and they were afraid. He said to them, I am. Don't be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, 
And just then, the boat reached the land where they had been heading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Offer us a teaching today, O Christ, that will inspire us for service in your name. Speak truth to us that we may know the path we are to follow. Speak, O Lord, and we will listen. Amen. My brother is a master at embellishing stories. First of all, he claims to remember things that no one else can. And because we don't remember, we can't say, oh, that didn't happen. Now, there is often an element of truth to his tales, or at least the possibility that they happened. But each time he repeats a story, and we all know we repeat our stories, new details or twists are likely to be added. By the time the Gospel of John is being compiled, very few, if any, of the participants in Jesus' earthly ministry are alive. But even if they were, it's unlikely that they would agree on all the details of any occasion. We remember what is significant to us. And we adapt our stories to instruct, inspire, or encourage others. There are very few occasions when a story of Jesus appears in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke have many similar stories with slightly different orders or details. Today's story is one of the few, other than the events of Holy Week, that appears in all four Gospels. But where Mark uses this story to show Jesus' compassion for the crowd, and perhaps as a teaching moment for his disciples, John presents it as a testing moment for Philip and perhaps the others who were present on the mountaintop. Jesus looks at the crowd and knows what he intends to do, but he asks Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Now, as is often the case in John, Philip doesn't answer Jesus' question. Rather, he says, it would take more money than we have to feed this crowd a snack. That there are no food trucks, no street vendors, no snack bars does not occur to Philip. He sees only the cost involved in feeding the crowd. Now, we in the church need Philip to guide our discussions at times. As Jesus himself said, no one starts building without being sure they have enough to complete the project. Our urban landscapes are littered with church buildings that are no longer holy space, but are being repurposed into homes, offices, health care facilities, and so forth. Hefty mortgages and dwindling members are a recipe for church closings that no one anticipated when they began to build. We do need to consider how many resources we have and the quantity needed to complete the task. However, if we believe that our resources are the only factor, we're likely to feel, feel as overwhelmed as Philip did. Now, Andrew was aware of a lunch brought by a young person, undoubtedly packed by a mother who insisted that the youth would be glad she planned ahead for his adventure. Thank God for mothers like that. We all could use one on occasion, even those of us who are grandparents. Amen? But looking at those five loaves and two fish, no one could possibly believe it would feed the people milling around Jesus. You know, on occasion, I've listened to congregations count their loaves and fish and come to the same conclusion. It's not enough to make a difference, so we might as well not try. We're faced with the apparent hopelessness of our situation 
knowing that we don't have enough. And so we fudge the answer to Jesus' question or respond as Andrew did. And that makes me wonder about how many times we miss opportunities to share in Jesus' ministries in our world. It happened again, Fred announced on the phone. (laughs) This time, just a few weeks after the last time he called with those words, it was to announce that the perfect organist candidate had just applied for the organ position. Previously, it was to announce that the perfect candidate for the church administrative assistant had applied. A year ago, in the middle of the pandemic and concerns about finances and ministry options, the director of a children's before and after school program inquired about using space at the church for her business because she was forced to relocate. Upgrading the facility to meet the standards for such a program meant spending time and money to pass the inspections. And the inspections went smoothly, at least partly because Fairview had partnered with many city government organizations, and they had a high opinion of the building and the congregation. Money from grants assisted with the costs And the kitchen has upgraded equipment, and the whole building is better protected by new smoke detectors. And the partnership will allow congregation members to volunteer, which will create new relationships with children and parents in the community. Seventeen years ago, when I began ministry at Fairview, Members of the congregation were told me the congregation was dying. Others insisted that I had better have a plan to save them, which I didn't. But within a short time, we developed a partnership with Fairview Elementary School because of a parent coordinator asking if we would place a poster on our wall. That partnership has led to many hours of volunteering at the school, collecting belts, clothing, and other supplies for children, distributing thousands of books to students, and an ongoing relationship of trust with the teachers and staff, as well as the students. Attending a community meeting led to a partnership with the Phoenix Project, a development program of Dayton and Good Samaritan Hospital, which again brought many resources and opportunities to the congregation. Hosting a funeral for a member of Agape Bible Fellowship because their own space was too small to accommodate the occasion led to a partnership to sponsor an annual community wellness festival. And one of the exhibitors at the event was so impressed with the success that she convinced her organization, Five Rivers Health Center, to become a partner and major sponsor the following year. Through Phoenix, Fairview became home to the Frock Priority Board, which has also been a strong partner in community ministry as well as with the Dayton Metro Public Library and the Board of Education. Today, no one at Fairview would say, our congregation is dying. Nor would they ask, well, what are your plans for saving us? Instead, they wonder what God is up to next and how they will be blessed to be a blessing. Not one project or ministry has been ended because of a lack of volunteers or resources. Like Fred, they announce, it's happening again. You know, when Marguerite was no longer able to maintain the food pantry, there were probably some people who said that we we can't do that anymore. When Brian volunteered to head up the task, There were probably some who said, he's going to burn out by doing too much. Even Brian wondered if we would have enough money to stock the pantry. 
But just as Jesus fed a crowd in the wilderness, he is feeding people right here in West Carrollton today. Community partners stepped up to clean and reorganize the space and supplies. Money arrived from individuals and congregations and civic organizations. Family Dollar in Miamisburg provided truckloads of food when remodeling their store. And an organization in the Dayton Mall did the same when they were forced to close. Volunteers continue to be recruited, and clients and volunteers can't say enough positive things about the work being done. You know, a man who came to the food pantry is now receiving prayer blankets made by one of our volunteers to distribute to people, which is his ministry in our community. Another church planted a garden to provide fresh vegetables, and we received the most beautiful green beans I've ever seen. <laughs> when, when we might have said, our five loaves and two fish won't do much, we would have been wrong. What we thought was not enough has been multiplied so that we have more than enough, an abundance of good things. Thanks to the diligence of our tech, tech experts and to grants received through the conference and district, we've been able to increase our online presence to reach new people and stay in touch with members who are no longer able to be with us in person. Our latest addition is a revamped website. Visit it to learn what a great place we are. We may never know how we have affected lives by this ministry, but God is working through us. Providing space for Operation Share Christmas has added many volunteers to our resources, some of whom are working year-round with the food pantry. Being a location for AA and Cub Scouts, Let's our community know that we care. Jesus performed miracles that day when the crowd was fed. I'm just not sure which was the most significant miracle. I'm fairly sure that the most important miracle wasn't multiplying the loaves and fish. I don't think it was walking on the water or making the boat arrive at the shore. Now, we aren't told that he did any healings, but that wouldn't have been the one I chose either. You know, it could be that the youth wasn't the only one in the crowd who had food. Maybe there were other mothers who packed lunches, and when they saw the baskets coming around, they were willing to contribute rather than keep their food for themselves. And that's a pretty good miracle, to open hearts, to share with strangers. But I think the miracle that would get my vote would be the one that changed the outlook of the disciples. At least I hope it changed their outlook. Philip saw scarcity, and Andrew saw futility. We don't have enough. What we have can't make a difference. Why bother to feed a crowd that's not our responsibility anyway? Jesus saw opportunity. Jesus saw plenty of green grass upon which the crowd could sit. Jesus saw God's generosity in providing even a small amount of food to be shared. Jesus saw what could be instead of what could not be. He modeled the words spoken by an angel to Mary. Nothing is impossible with God. When we understand that, we may still count our resources before starting a project. But we will know if it is of God 
there will always be more than enough. What looks like too little to us will turn into an abundant blessing. Instead of saying, we can't, or why bother, we will say, it's happening again. Our we can't will become, why can't we? And then, of course we can. For Jesus Christ is still in the business of feeding crowds, healing broken people, and teaching followers to spread the good news. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen.
I want to say thanks once again to our worship leader, Harold Fullaway, and to our musicians and our tech team. It was lovely to hear the organ today. Jeanette, thank you for sharing with us. Um, I will be off the next two weeks as part of our agreement for three-quarter time ministry. Now, thanks to Rosetta Schaffner and the SPRC committee for ensuring that pastoral coverage is available for these weeks. So feel free to call the office or call Rosetta or annoy, annoy anyone other than me, okay? <laughs> Please continue to remember our homebound persons and those who are facing difficult times with prayers and notes of encouragement. I want to remember as well that many are still suffering from COVID-19. The pandemic is not over. So please continue to take measures to care for one another in this time. Um, don't forget that there's a, a pizza party at noon tomorrow, right? right? At Marion's. For the women and the men are allowed to come if they sit at a separate table. Let us pray in community. whose name is love and whose presence is eternal. Hear our prayers as we offer them to you, trusting that your desire is always for the well-being of creation and the obedience of your beloved peoples. We offer ourselves to you as servants of your grace. Hear us now as we pray for those who are facing difficult times. For any who are ill, injured, or dealing with chronic conditions. And for those who await diagnoses and treatments. We pray for those who are moving from life to life. And for those who accompany them in these days. We pray for any who were without safe food, water, or shelter, and for those who are in the paths of storms, floods, fires, and other natural disasters, as we name them before you with our hearts and our voices.
God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are in need, for those who are addicted to life-threatening substances or behaviors, and for their families and friends who are affected by their addictions. We pray for any who are living in prisons with bars or prisons of their own making. For those who have limited access to health care, education, or training. For those whose employment does not provide for their families. For children and youth who are without guidance and caring adults. For those who need assistance with daily living. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for creation and for human institutions. For the wise and careful use and protection of water, air, soil, and all the gifts that sustain and delight life. We pray for governments and leaders whose goal is our common well-being. We pray for voices of influence to speak truth to power, particularly on behalf of those who are powerless. We pray for the protection and dignity of all peoples, particularly those who are at risk from the color of their skin, the language they speak, or the way in which they worship you. We pray for a desire for peace to overcome greed and self-satisfaction. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the followers of Jesus, for Bishop Palmer and Superintendent Roper and all who lead your people. We pray for bold leaders who challenge the forces of evil in whatever ways they present themselves. We pray for dedicated disciples and apostles who serve among those in great need, speaking a word of hope to those who have lost hope. We pray for humble servants who care for their neighbors through generous acts of mercy. And we pray for the people, mission, and ministry of this congregation and the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. Now we pray in the communion of the saints using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, Heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness, found at number 140 in the United Methodist Hymnal, and we will sing all verses.
God has blessed us with abundant gifts, and we are privileged to share those gifts with the world. Let us go forth rejoicing in the goodness of our God. Amen.